So thank you all for joining us today. We've got online, we've got in person, we have our guests up here. Um, I just wanted to, again, thank you all for coming, spending your time um, out to Midway and to share your experience and your wisdom with the students. Um, students, this, a reminder, this is the Eagle Connect program. The Eagle Connect program was created to allow you all to connect to professionals in the field. And so through this, if you have any questions while we're going through any of the information, if you want any follow-up, um, then please feel free to ask. We want to keep this as low pressure as possible um, so that you feel comfortable to learn what you need to learn to figure out what your next steps are going to be. And so to get us all started, um, what I'm going to have to do is the, all of our panelists are going to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their professional history and um, we'll go from there, okay? So Barry, you wanna get started for me? Sure. I'm Barry Pop. I uh, live here in Versailles. I'm with Cumberland Valley National Bank. I am a commercial lender there. Uh, I'm an alumni of Midway. I used to be Midway College, now I'm university. Uh, so uh, I started at the bottom. I started as a teller, worked my way through the migration, the corporate ladder, I had, you know, whatever you wanna call it, to my current world, so that's me in a nutshell. Cool. Um, my story is a little bit longer and weirder, so bear with me. Um, my name is Sarah Basso. I am currently a staffing executive uh, for Robert Half International, which is a headhunting firm for finance and accounting professionals. Uh, formerly, uh, was at the Lexington Legends professional baseball team as vice president of business development for that team um, for several years. And then before that, was an assistant general manager for a minor league baseball team in Southern California. And prior to my stint in baseball for about seven or eight years, uh, prior to that, I was actually a high school teacher for four years. Um, so I graduated from the University of Missouri uh, in 2005, got my master's degree from UK in 2011. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of been a very different path, but uh, yeah. Common threads are there, and we can get to that later. Yeah. All right, my story is more similar to Sarah's, a little bit long and convoluted. My name is Elizabeth Pitchford. I'm with Ruggles Sign, which is located in Versailles. I'm a manufacturer for national um, retailers, mostly more than anything else. So if you walk into a mall and you see a Victoria's Secret, or a Bath and Body Works, or a Chico's, we most likely make it and um, ship across the world. Uh, we're all sides of the manufacturer. Um, but as I said, my, my stint's a little different. I actually graduated uh, or, or went to school for fashion merchandising, of all things, and um, went to work for TJ Maxx. Uh, the thing that I can tell you that I found to be probably most effective for me is that I was very flexible. I moved five times in three years for TJ Maxx to move to different stores in different locations. Um, ended up in Atlanta, uh, which was a, kind of a land of opportunity at the time, and got to work for Home Depot as an assistant buyer for the paint department of all departments, um, but worked as an assistant buyer down there, and then um, came back to Kentucky to finish my degree, because I hadn't finished it. Um, so I came back to the UK and graduated from the UK. I uh, worked for Lamar Outdoor Advertising. Um, I worked for Ruggles for a while, worked for Lamar, and then I worked for in Evansville, Indiana, for a computer company as the director of marketing for their company, and wanted to get back to Kentucky. Came back to uh, work for an advertising agency, and opened an office in Lexington for them, and then went back to work for Ruggles Sign once again, about 20 plus years ago. So, happy to be here. Finally, we did graduate from the UK, by the way. My name is Ely Rock. Um, I'm with PNC Bank. I'm with our wealth group. I'm a client advisor, and my goal really is to go out into the community and in our branches and basically develop the business um, within those two channels. I graduated from Midway in 2007. I lived in Buster Hall. Um, I was here too when it was Midway College, and my story really kind of started with um, equine, my passion of horses. I came here from Portland, Oregon, um, and just happened upon Midway College one evening while I was driving to Louisville to look at University of um, Louisville and was like, Midway is my home, like this is where I need to be. Um, I graduated with a focus in equine management, started really in uh, pharmaceutical sales for veterinary uh, medicine, 
Then through that, kind of transitioned into um, selling ultrasound equipment, capital equipment sales, um, again, in the equine industry. Um, and loved it. It was very focused on education. And that's kind of how we developed um, our sales and our opportunities was through educating our, our clients. And it took me all over the country um, to every, you know, farm, equine clinic, showground, fair, fairground, whatever. It was so much fun. Um, but then, you know, as I uh, had a family, it became really difficult to do that. So I started with MetLife, and I got my securities and exchange licenses. And um, then kind of found a, an opportunity <coughs> as a private banker with PNC and really just found my calling in terms of developing that personal relationship with my clients and helping them develop financially. And so I've been with PNC um, a little bit over four years now and kind of a roundabout story as well, I guess. <laughs> So now we're just opening the floor for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free. Um, anybody feels a little nervous? I know Brandon has a prepared question that we can want to get started. Um, what is your number one piece of advice for a student in their first year? Do you want us to like go right down the? <laughs> it's completely up to you. As as you all feel comfortable, as you have an answer, go for it. Ah, uh, you know, the first piece of advice is that this time that you have before you graduate is really crucial for you to get out and, you know, start to develop those center of influences, start to develop folks within the community that you can say, hey, I'm interested in looking into this job opportunity. Um, you kind of have this really beautiful window where you have a wonderful roof over your head, you have, you know, three square meals if you're living at the, at the dorm, um, so to speak. And so this is the time when you have all of these opportunities at your fingertips, meaning uh, teachers, professors, um, center of influences that are coming in on this campus that you really have to just, you know, say, okay, I'm going to go after some of these folks in terms of helping me find a job. That was my biggest concern, you know, come um, – you know, March, April, May, uh, when I was getting ready to graduate, you know, what was that next step going to be? And so this is the time to really do it because you have all of these resources right here. So I would like to agree with that. Um, try any kind of internship you can get because I think you think you believe this is what you want to do. This is the career path I want to take. I'm loving it. I love my classes. And then you get out and get the experience in the real world. You need to verify that indeed is the direction you want to take. Um, so that you can have a little bit of that experience. Plus, the, the, the beauty of that is employers always like to see experience in the background, but if you just graduated from college, you don't have experience in the background. So if you have an internship, I think that gives you an extra step up from anybody else who may be graduating or competing against for a job. I to completely echo on that. For sure, internships 100% and getting that experience on your resume. But even prior to that, like freshmen, sophomores, obviously you're probably not going to be able to get an internship right away if at that level. But at the same time, go out and volunteer. Go out and get immersed in your community. Find a, a nonprofit organization that you are interested in or invested in and just start volunteering. That will give you a network to start networking with. Um, and we'll speak to the points I already said about just getting to know people. Knowing people out in the community will really then you can fall back on them and say, hey, Remember, we used to volunteer together at XYZ Nonprofit. I'm getting ready to apply for this internship. Or I see that your company has an internship that's open. Would you mind if I put you as a, as a professional reference? There's always ways to build that network, even if it's not specifically work-related. Just getting yourself a network started somewhere, uh, that's super important, I think, as a freshman sophomore, for sure. I think as a freshman coming in, to show up and get out of your comfort zone. Do something you, you know, high school is different than college. College is different than your career. But get out of your comfort zone and try new things and experiences to find that passion for the career. Because in your career, you may go through several, as many of us have. Uh, one thing I left off is I started off as an auto mechanic, just so you know, a turn banker, so I'm a recovered mechanic. But, but get out of your comfort zone and find a passion and then pursue that passion. I think 
early on in college, you think you've got this tunnel vision of I'm going to be X, and then you get to your senior year and you're thinking, you know, I'm an English major, but I want to be in finance or whatever that difference is. Find a passion and then pursue that passion through volunteer opportunities, the um, internships, and experience it before you have to do it. And I think get out of your comfort zone and show up. How do you deal with the idea of change and like the fear of getting out of your comfort zone? Like, how did you get through that? Uh, you just have to go. Like, it's that first step. I mean, it's it's. I know that that sounds silly, and I know that everybody always says that. There there is always that one thing that's going to keep you from doing it, and it is that fear. It's just you know what? Do I want it or do I do I not? And the only person that's going to ever advocate for yourself is is you. No one else is going to look out for your salary increase. No one else is going to look out for that next promotion. No one else is going to get you an internship. No one else is going to get you a volunteer spot. Only you are. So if you don't have that that in you to take that first step, well, then you're going to kind of stay where, where you are. So if you're okay being complacent, then that's what, what you're okay with. But really, it's just realizing, what do I really want? Do I want that? Yes. Okay, well, then I just got to get over myself. The worst that anyone's going to ever tell you is no. And you're going to take that first step, and you're going to make mistakes along that path of getting out of your comfort zone. You're going to make mistakes, but use those as opportunities. Don't beat yourself up over those mistakes. Learn from those so the next time you take that step, you're prepared. And you, you can't take the step unless it's, it's totally up to you. Nobody can push or tug you along. You've got to take that first step. I love that question because I get a lot of black this at work, but when I go into a, a really big meeting where you have several millions of dollars on the table, I um, do so much practicing and role playing. And my colleagues are like, oh, God, here she comes again down the hall, you know. But, um, you know, the thing is, is like practice makes perfect. And if you're nervous about something, then you have to do it a million times till you feel so comfortable with it. And you don't have to do it like, to a stranger, you can, you know, call, you know, someone that you're comfortable with and start that way. You know, okay, hey, I'm going to just kind of talk to you about what my goals are, what I want to do. Just listen to how it all sounds. And then maybe the next time um, you can kind of practice with a friend or a professor or someone. But practice makes perfect. And you kind of have to, like, maybe figure out exactly what it is that is concerning, you know, is it introducing yourself or is it stating what you want out of that introduction and then practice that. And I would have to just concur. I mean, one thing to do is also find if there's, um, a, if I could bring up women in business in, in this area, for example, they actually work with students who are trying to make that step out of um, their comfort zone and try to get you prepared. So it, it's just a, preparedness is going to make you feel more comfortable taking a step. Then it's awkward no matter how you have it. You just have to <laughs> embrace it. Yeah. We do role playing every day. At yeah. work. We practice phone calls with people if we're getting ready to call a new client that's a huge possible huge client. We <laughs> sit in a room and just talk it out with each other. It's silly sounding but there's a way that you're like, oh, well, that sounded dumb. Let's start over. <laughs> so it's, it's a very nice way for you just to just kind of get all of that off first, all the nerves out, and then by the time you're doing it on the phone, it's probably the 15th time you said it, and it's okay. Even if you blow up, it's okay. Yeah. What's the hardest part of your job? Juggling a lot of different things at the same time. And then that becomes organizational skills from when you can get from college and school. It's like, okay, I know I need to go to this meeting and I need to be prepared for other meetings tomorrow. We have proposals that we have to write. We have research we've got to do here. So just kind of keeping it all juggled. I think I'm very honored to you. I think finding new opportunities, honestly, you just have to be hungry. And, you know, sometimes I'll just get so down on myself, like, oh, I'm, you know, what's my pipeline going to look like? Or what's this, you know, um, Banking is, there are so many banks, there's so many opportunities for people to, you know, go to a, to a bank and pay less than a fee or whatever.
whatever their need is. And so you have to really be hungry to get that business. And for me, I always am like, okay, 2019 started, you know, like the whole year starts over again. So and that's kind of how I was even in school. Just, you know, I'm always kind of worrying about the next step which I need to work on because sometimes it's better just to embrace it and enjoy the kind of ride, but for me, that's why I learned that. They kind of pull both of those together, definitely time management. They you get tasked with so many different hats in so many different capacities um, <clears throat> that it's knowing how to kind of time block your day, at least for us in the headhunting world um, when it comes to what I do now. Baseball was a little bit different, but what I do now I manage an entire practice of loan staff where I'm finding jobs for people. So I'm looking to recruit and bring on people full-time to my loan staff practice, and then once I bring them on full-time, I have to find them an engagement to go out on. So I'm consistently trying to pull in, push out, pull in, push out. So if I'm maintaining one pipeline but not maintaining the other pipeline, I'm going to have this batch fill and then nothing to happen over here. So what I have found for my, at least my time management, I literally time block my day. And I'll set reminders even in my Outlook calendar or on my iPhone just so that it won't, I'll give a reminder dingling at me saying, hey, it's time to do this now. Or, hey, we're going to do this for the next hour and a half. Because if I don't have some sort of reminder, I will just get lost in the weeds and get lost in that, what's my next step? What's my next pipeline call? And then psych myself out of calling XYZ client because they're too big and I don't want to call them yet. It, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you've got to figure out what's the best time management task for you. Um, so I've played with a couple things, and i got to get better at a couple things myself. But um, it's definitely managing all of the hats and managing all of the pipelines and learning how to best serve yourself. I think another side of that is balance. Balance between all the tasks at work, mm -hmm. but it's balance between leaving work at work, your family, your volunteer opportunities, whatever that may be. But it's finding balance. And if, if you can find balance, then you can find a peace. And I think that if, if you're struggling with finding that balance, you're going to struggle. So I just encourage you, starting now, and your, my son's a sophomore in college, and my discussion with him is you're going to have a career one day. Start now with 8 to 6. That's your school life. 6 to 10 is your social life. Use your 8 to 5 like it's your job. The rest of your time, start finding balance now. And for me as a, a banker, it is tough. There's a bank on every corner. We all have deposits, loans, and investments. And it's about that balance of relationship and the hard sale. So it's, it's balance across the board for me is, is the difficult part. What was the best day of your professional I, know I do a lot of event planning because I, I do marketing for our company as well. And I have to say that you know, I had a very successful event a couple of years ago. And it just, it just makes you feel really good. It's like we all came together. I brought people from all over the country in. And we had a great meeting, you know, several days. So having that success. I'm going to say it's, it's my greatest day at work is when somebody that I've worked with that nobody believed in are successful, whether it's a staff person or just a customer that, you take a risk on that person and they succeed, whatever it is. If it's an employee getting a promotion or it's a customer paying off that debt that they said you never should have made that loan, those kinds of things are what I think are great moments in my career is um, helping people when maybe the cards are stacked against them and your gut tells you the right answer. If you do it, if you make a decision with your heart, you're going to be wrong, but you use your gut and your gut instinct and then that person is successful, then that's an accomplishment. I mean, I can make somebody with an 800 credit score, tons of cash in the bank, and they don't need the loan. I can make those loans all day long and never have a question. But for that person, it's just starting this new business. It's really difficult. The capital is not there. They don't have any cash, but they have a bright business plan that looks like it's going to be successful. To see that person get to that next step, that's success, and that's a great moment in my day. I think I'm going to kind of pull in a couple of them, actually, because 
yeah, in my past careers, I would have these awesome events, and we would have all these things where blood, sweat, and tears was put into so many, you know, moving parts. Um, you have a great team to rely on. You have this great team mentality, and everybody's pulled their pulled their weight, done their part. Um, so those are wonderful moments. But I think just personally, as a as a huge success for me was having that aha moment of finding that balance. Um, because sports was so not balanced in so many different ways, and I had this idealized picture in my head of what it was going to be like to work in sports. And sure, it definitely served its purpose to be in minor league baseball for seven plus years. Um, but then you have to realize you have to have a, an internal moment with yourself of do I really want to be working 70, 80 hours a week just to say that I'm a vice president of business development for a minor league baseball team? Do I want to be in the major someday? Well, yeah, but will my life still be exactly the same? And what's that balance? What am I willing to give up for that kind of career? Well, am I willing to not have time with my family? Am I willing to miss baptisms and birthdays and things that I wasn't able to go home for because I had all these other events that we were planning and all this stuff going on at the ballpark? No. So it's kind of finding that internal balance with myself. So that was a huge success for me in kind of having that moment of, clarity of what do I really want in my career? I want something that's going to give me some sort of success personally and fulfillment, something that I know that I can have some sort of projection to. There's not a ceiling above me right here. I know that I can at least have some movement, so I have goals that I can set for myself, and I'm going to get that work-life balance that I've been craving for a really long time, and I'm not just going to go to work disgruntled and upset about it. I'm going to actually do something about it. So that was kind of this big, I guess, win moment for me was just kind of having that self-reflection um, and realizing really what I needed to do for myself. Can you all spend a little bit of time and tell us, like, what your job is? Like, if somebody was going to show up and say, what do you do? Like, can you tell us that? I want to hear that a little bit from everybody. You all sure. told us your titles. Yeah. But I don't know what that means. Sure. <laughs> I thought that was somebody. So um, I am I'm obviously with PNC Bank, and my title is, like I said, client advisor. But really what that means is we have a group of about um, six different specialists, ranging from investment advisors to trust officers to uh, private bankers. And, and this group is assigned to clients that I bring in. So clients I bring in, usually we're looking at investable assets, a million dollars and above. So <clears throat> it's a, a big threshold in terms of getting them into um, our wealth group. So my job is business development, meaning I'm out in uh, the market, Lexington uh, area, Tri-State area, and also the uh, uh, southeast territory, so like London and that area, and working with our branches and then working with just center of influences in the area to bring in those clients. And a lot of times uh, those clients will look like maybe they've just sold a business, um, maybe they have just come into some type of settlement, um, maybe they uh, are moving from one provider to the next. You know, it, it changes every time. And, um, you know, you like many, many times, most of the time, I would say millionaires just are just completely regular looking type of people that you wouldn't say, oh, wow, you know, this person. So it's, you just have to be kind of on your game and listen and um, be open to those opportunities as they come in. And then once they start onboard them, close the business, get them signed up with us, and then they are then kind of engulfed by our team and I go out and find them. In my role at Ruggles, uh, I kind of handle several different hats. Um, the, probably the most common part of my day is uh, handling, I do a lot of the local sales. Most of our business is done outside the state of Kentucky. And we are very blessed by the fact that the business has been there since 1946. So there's a lot of people who are familiar with our company, and they will call in regularly to see if we can make signs for them, for their businesses. 
Um, so I will um, field those calls as they're coming in and make a determination if it's something that um, we can be able to work with them on or if it's maybe not something we can work with them on. But um, our project management, and again, so I'll work with local sales, but I also do handle, I handle all the Brookstones, if you're familiar with the Brookstone company, although they've been through bankruptcy. Um, they're still uh, alive and going. And um, so I handle all the Brookstones across the nation. Um, and we'll work with general contractors, we'll work with architects, we'll work with designers, developing this image, helping to develop this image of a sign when you walk in the door, the first impression, before you walk in the door, when you came on campus, you saw the Big Wave University sign, which we made. But it's, so, um, you know, you'll, you'll see that, and that's their impression. And you've got to work with, with people who have never done that before, but especially um, someone who's just opening a business. They don't really know for sure uh, what, what direction they want to take. So I help kind of guide them along that path and say, this may work well with your type of business, um, outdoor business, if it's, you know, mostly indoor or small shop. I'm going to try to just help guide them along that path. Uh, it includes working with general contractors, as I said, making sure that we stay on track with the timetable of buildings. We work with a lot of construction timetables, um, which are often a moving target as people are trying to build and uh, maybe do, you know, build up their new buildings. Sometimes they get hit with weather or they get hit with permit problems, and then that causes delays. You just have to be flexible for that. Um, I do a lot of code research. There's anytime you build a new building, anytime you put up a sign, you actually have to pull a permit. You have to pay a fee to the city. You have to, to meet certain restrictions that the city has. It says you can have you know, this size sign on Nicholasville Road in Lexington, but if you go into Regency Road, you can only have this size sign. So you've got to go through all of your research to find out what's allowed wherever you're going to be located. Um, so we do that. And uh, I did tell you I do handle events for our company, so that's kind of my fun part. I mean, I enjoy the rest of my job, too, but my friend part is handling special events for the company. Um, and I've been there just a little while, so a lot of times I'll help the train and get people help get them acclimated. And then I enjoy volunteering. I work with the Chamber um, of Commerce. I do work on the, on the board for the Chamber of Commerce in Woodford County. And that led me to a Women in Business program, which I work with. That's how I met McKenzie. And again, just getting those outreaches. So we're um, a bit involved with Lexington Forum and Lexington, again, kind of met a good group of people to just learn about other businesses and kind of do that. So, okay. so Robert Half is a staffing agency um, that's been around since 1948 um, and started off as the first professional staffing agency. And as it has grown over the, the time frame that they've been around, we have now seven different specialized um, divisions. So every division focuses on a specific industry. So if you're in marketing and interested in marketing, there's the creative group, there's the legal team, there's IT and technology, um, and of course several others. The three divisions that are in the Lexington office are Robert Half Finance and Accounting, Account Temps, and Office Team. Um, office Team specifically works with folks um, on the temp, temp to hire basis which again is a really great opportunity to get some good experience <clears throat> if you're looking for like part-time work. Um, it's a great way to just kind of get your foot in the door of the company and start networking with some businesses um, on attempt and attempt to hire um, kind of basis. They do basically anything in a professional office setting. So if office team is looking for executive assistants, um, front desk receptionists, um, filing clerks, people in law firms, things like that, um, anything front of house or back of house, that's what office team does. Account temp specifically focuses on um, a professional office setting, um, anything attached to the revenue cycle of a company. So anything related to accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, things like that. Um, that's basically what account, temp, account temps does on the temp and temp to hire side. So Robert Half Finance and Accounting is the division that deals with folks who are permanently employed, looking confidentially and quietly for their next position. So if there was a CFO or a staff accountant or a controller of a company um, who really was just looking for that next salary bump or that next you know, title bump um, in their career, they would reach out to our recruiters and would confidentially start working with them on other opportunities that they might be sourcing with other companies. So that doesn't answer anything of what I do. What I specifically do is I am with the account temps team um, and I have sort of my own division that I manage myself. I used to be a part of the account temps team about three months into my position. They promoted me or moved me into this role where I now manage our loan staff. So I manage our salary professional practice, 
which I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, which means I'm looking to recruit any full-time employed uh, person or even an unemployed person in that finance and accounting world. So if they're a staff accountant, if they're a bookkeeper, if they're a senior financial analyst, if they're an internal auditor, whatever their role might be, I'm looking to recruit them and bring them into my practice full-time and offer them a full-time job working for our company, working for Robert Half, to come on board as a colleague of mine. And then what I do um, once I get them onboarded is then work with my account temps team to work with all of our clients to find positions for them in terms of, we call them engagements or projects. So we essentially loan them out to our clients for like a, a minimum of six weeks up to months, years in length for however long they might need. They might have an opening in, in an actual position or they might have a problem where they've had people quit on them and they haven't been able to catch up on, on the headcount um, in their uh, departments. So they need a loan staff and they're not really taking the, the full burden of fully onboarding um, a full-time person because we're, we're taking care of that for them. And I'm just letting them borrow my people. So that's kind of what I do in that show. Well, as a commercial lender, uh, I wear many hats from uh, risk management, trying to mitigate risks with each opportunity, building relationships, uh, sales and marketing. So it's, it's, a, it's a culmination, especially at a, Cumberland Valley is a smaller bank. Uh, PNC is a huge entity compared to us. How big is PNC? Um, we're the fifth biggest. We're the smallest. <laughs> we're, we're, just five, we're just 500 million, so we're not even a billion dollar bank. So we do wear a lot of hats. But a commercial lender basically is a salesperson to work with small to mid-sized uh, businesses, uh, even larger businesses. But in this area, we focus a lot on smaller businesses, whether it's a startup, a mom and pop, or just a local entity that just needs a relationship. And we I make loans. Um, turn down some loans, uh, but it's about building that relationship, crunching the numbers, and mitigating any risk to the bank uh, for that loan. So if, if you're lending a million dollars, what's the likelihood that they're not going to pay? Uh, so you crunch the numbers, do some projections, look at their, another thing we have to go on is history. We can't, we can forecast, we can't see the future. So we look at their past financials to see if they're in a position to where they're on an incline or a decline and then we mitigate that risk to either make the loan or not make the loan or come back with a different opportunity of a smaller loan that can grow over time. But it's basically, I think of it as a relationship. Um, I won't say that I'm a partner with the business because I'm not investing cash, which is what you know a lot of small businesses need, but I'm a partner in the sense that I help them make decisions for themselves. Uh, and it starts with them trusting me and, and me learning as much as I can about them. Uh, but a small bank is a, is a great institution to learn because we do wear so many hats. So we, we cross-sell deposits. We, we want them to bank with us fully, uh, not just make the loan and, and leave. We want it to be long-term. We want it to be a relationship. So I'm a relationship manager and a risk mitigator. So that helps. And I don't do the commercials. I've got a <coughs> So it's nothing to do with commercials. If a student wanted to follow in your footsteps, what should they do tomorrow to get started? Um, what should they do that you did that you did it, and what should they not do that you did? Well, I can say that uh, if they want to follow in my footsteps, it's a long road, so have comfortable shoes. <laughs> um, I've, I've uh, been in banking for 30 years. I've been in 11 different banks uh, and, and a credit union in there, so uh, I've kind of experienced a lot of different – I've been in Fifth Third, really big bank, to the bank I'm at now is at a smaller bank that was $100 million. So uh, what I would recommend is to dive in and learn everything you can. Even if you start at an entry-level position, start immediately learning where you want to be. Dress for success, learn for success, and put yourself on a trajectory to get where you want to be. If you go into any starter job, any first job, and you get complacent, then you're going to be right there. But you want to learn everything you can, and be a sponge. 
find that person that you want to mirror in in their career. Uh, I'm speaking career wise, not a family or anything like that. But find that person that's successful where you project yourself to be. Call them up and ask them to mentor you or have a conversation, interview them, talk to them, see what their road was like so you can begin to plan your path. Because if you don't, you're kind of wandering in the field blind and you're going to hit bumps. But if you've got a guide and you've seen somebody else's path, you're going to find your way a little easier. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to follow their path identically. Uh, but you're going to be able to set a course. And you may find out that banking's not for me. I want to go be a school teacher or, you know, <coughs> a school teacher to minor league baseball. And that's okay. Um, I think you just have to get where you're starting and then look ahead. Don't get complacent. And I think uh, for myself as a mechanic, I, kinda, I didn't like going home greasy every day. I didn't like having to purchase my tools that I didn't know how to use. And then when I changed somebody's oil and didn't put the oil cap on, and it's just little things like that that just really told me I'm in the wrong spot. So I started the entry level at the bank and just began learning and experiencing, asking questions. You know, the CSRs across the lobby opening an account. Hey, can I sit with you and just kind of listen to what you say and what you're doing for the customer so that I can be prepared? Or maybe it helps me answer questions on the teller line when that person, I need to open an account. Well, what kind of account do you think you want? We have these options. Have you given it any thought or can I answer any questions to prepare them to go into there? And then they're seeing me thinking, hey, he knows what he's doing. Let's put him over here. So ask questions and just follow, find someone and just interview them. Just ask questions. That's my suggestion. Something you shouldn't do is when you interview, tell the person interviewing you that you're going to have their job in three or four years. <laughs> that's, that's probably not a good thing. I thought it was, but it kind of backfired. So just uh, be confident, but don't be, I, I guess, just... Careful what you say. A <laughs> uh, couple things on, uh, to reiterate, although we've already sort of said, I wish I would have networked earlier, networked more earlier, I guess I should say. I was in a sorority in college. I didn't really take advantage of the, the volunteering. I mean, I did because there was requirements that you had to do, and I was like, oh, sure, I'll go do it. But I didn't really see the true value of it until I started to get a little bit older. Um, but now I'm in Junior League of Lexington. I just finished Leadership Lexington, um, a class, a leadership class through the Chamber of Commerce last year. I mean, talk, the networking is huge when it comes to just being in, in any kind of business. Being able to rely and reach out to someone that you met at an event, you might even become friends with that person. You have no idea who you're going to bump into. Um, that I wish I would have done a little bit more of, and now I'm, I'm really proud of how I try to keep myself active in those kinds of things. Um, and one thing that I always tried to do as I was growing through my career path was to always dress for the position that I wanted, not dressing for the position that I had. So if I knew that I wanted to be a vice president someday, I was going to have to wear a blazer and dress pants every day or a blazer and a skirt every day. I wanted to dress like I wanted to be in that role. Um, and for, it does amazing things for how you project yourself, how you, how you talk on the phone. If you're smiling when you're on the phone, people can hear you on the other side. It's, it's all the things, just how you project yourself, um, you'll feel just completely different. Um, so those are things that I really try to take pride in. Um, and here I am sitting in jeans, so I'll say we're having a casual day at work today. So <laughs> throw that out there. But, um, yeah, just, just keeping those things in mind. People can hear if you're happy on the phone, if you're smiling. They can hear if, they, if you're uncomfortable in what you're wearing. Uh, and that sounds weird, but if you're comfortable in your own skin and you're, you're you know, confident in how you're presenting anything that you're selling, banking, baseball, staffing, selling people's resumes, whatever it is, they're going to want to talk to you. It's literally all about relationships. Um, and my suggestion more than anything is while you're young and don't have a family, you have some flexibility to take advantage of opportunities. Um, and that's what moved me all over the country is like, Need me over there? Let's go. You know, need me over there? Let's go. And not having being tied down gave me the opportunity just to go out and try other things. And it led me to different. I mean, I was in retail to begin with, and then I went into management for a distribution center. And then, you know, I went into a computer company and marketing. And it's the, the opportunities just really presented themselves because I allowed myself to be flexible. So if you 
can let yourself, you know, look at things outside. We were talking about comfort zones earlier. Look at things outside. Like that might give you a chance to do something different just because you've been doing, you know, accounting with the bank. Maybe maybe you want to do accounting in the equine industry. You just never know what that might start bringing to you. That could be a whole different world. So just, just keep a sharp eye out there. And kind of be, my other suggestion might be uh, be creative in trying to present yourself. Um, based on the job that you're trying to, to get. For example, when I was trying to go for a uh, position with an advertising agency, my resume was a wanted, basically a wanted poster. And I said, I wanted this position. And I had an advertising agency was like, whoa. And he said, I have no job available for you, but I want you on board. And so it was just kind of, you know, take yourself and make the most of yourself to try to present it to your potential employer. I would say, um, I, I really like what Sarah just said in that relationships are key and sometimes you meet someone and it's not for another three four years that it comes around and that person is really a key person to help you get to that next step um, so making sure that you develop those bonds and that you you know follow up you hold your word and, and um, really focus on those the other thing is don't be afraid of no I would say that most people say no to me most times um, but that's okay, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the one or two yeses that can, you know, make it all okay. Um, you just have to keep going after it, and eventually it will work out. Hard work is addictive to me, I, lo I love it. Um, and, you, you know, as I'm sure you know, being in school, you just can't be afraid of it. You just have to roll up your sleeves and get into it. In terms of dressing, I, I completely agree with that. Um, you have Dressing for the job that you want is really important. And um, for the ladies in here, Closing the Door is a great place to take advantage of that at a little bit lower cost. Um, so just for your first interview um, or internship, maybe think about that if you're like, how oh, will I wear? And don't have, um, you know, don't want to spend a lot of money. I go there all the time. <laughs> School outfit. <laughs> just as a follow-up to one thing is, is, is I can't do this is don't take shortcuts. If you take shortcuts, you're going to get a short return. So you got to work hard. you got to be playing. you got to be um, sp specific about where you're headed. Don't take shortcuts. It's so easy sometimes to take that shortcut. And then the last thing is honest and integrity. And I think that's one thing mm -hmm. um, that's going to take you a long way is be honest and upfront and keep your integrity because uh, so many times um, you can – you can hurt yourself significantly by breaking or bending what the actuality is. So, honest and integrity. Especially in the financial world. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to take it one step. One thing we haven't talked about yet is social media. And that, believe it or not, in my day, I never even worried about it. It didn't exist, sorry. <laughs> but um, you'll find employers are going to look up, look you up on social media. So, I know you guys have a great time. I have a great time in college. Um, <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of, I'm so glad we didn't, this is going to date me, but we did not have cell phones at the time, so I am so glad because there's no pictures out there. <laughs> um, but watch what you put online, okay, guys, because something you did 10 years ago is going to still show up 10 years later, and just remember that. So, you know, I know you guys, like I said, you have a good time, you want to share that, but be careful. It was a Kevin Hart recently that it was, it was 10 years ago, a post came back to bite him, so just, yeah. uh, Keep that in mind. It's a great. Um, yeah, that's just literally what I what our team does every single day. We're like, oh, so and so, Google, all of the things, social media, Twitter, yeah. LinkedIn, all of them. Yeah. That's what I'm calling Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys um, mentioned some really great things about like the dress for success. I just wanted to remind you all that we have a suit up event happening on March 17th, and so that's where um, we have a part of JCPenney's in the Fayette Mall, um, and they will be opening their doors for us, and they'll have people helping with suiting, and they'll be helping with uh, mini makeovers from Sephora, and they have an opportunity for you to get uh, headshots, and so, and they're also going to give you 40% off discount, so um, you can get an entire suit for under $200, brand new, if you wanted to go out and do that. Um, so that's on March 17th. That's to start off Success Week. So I just wanted to kind of put that in your ear or reminder uh, for what they're saying when you go to go out there and do that. So and we're going to have some of our ambassadors there 
at the event helping you with picking out like what's the right fit and uh, we have someone who will do free tailoring for you as well so that's pretty cool yeah, Take advantage. Take advantage yeah. <laughs> the headshot the headshot is linkage yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I still don't have one. I'm cropping yeah. my own head up. <laughs> you need to. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and you can see opportunities that they're offering. So oh, that's great. So thank you again for your time. I'm going to go on and end our recording. If you all like to have any conversations, please feel free to do so. Um, and thank you all again for your time. Can we give them a hand? Thank you, guys. Oh,